Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to show you how to use Postgres as a task queue for Django. So we're going to have it as a simple task queue so that we can queue background tasks, things that we want to not block our server and to execute in the background, long running actions, then have them execute really simply. So instead of using Celery or some other task queue, we can just use a database. Here we are, let's get into it. So set up Django. So we'll just run this in our fresh Python environment. If I can open my terminal. There we go. Okay, there we go. And now remember to add your sim to your installed apps in settings. Installed apps, here we are. Sim, great. Now section two, we'll connect Postgres to Django in our settings.py. Like I said, this isn't, you don't actually need to do this because we could use SQLite. But, so feel free to skip this and go on to the next chapter. I'm gonna do this because I like Postgres and it's much more robust generally than SQLite. Up to you. Okay, so if you've, we've assumed you've already installed Postgres on your computer. If you haven't, go here, and this is what I use for Mac. If you're Windows, you can use this. And then open a Postgres shell. So we're here in the terminal, and then PSQL to open the Postgres shell. And then we want to create this database. Okay, there we go. I've already got demo demo user um, because I created one late earlier. And we'll create a database. Yep, I've already got mine because I did this demo before and then grant all privileges again which again i'll privileges grant and then you can exit with q like that okay and now we want to connect postgres to django you'll see that we already added psycho pg that's the adapter that allows django to connect to postgres and so now we'll hook it up so go into we just want to copy this uh, go and find our databases here and then paste over the top. Obviously, if you're not using Postgres, if you're not using SQLite here, then leave it, but we're not. And there you go, quite self-explanatory. And let's run our server to check that it works as a general point, just to see that we've installed Django correctly. This it won't relate to Postgres. Okay, yep. Now we want to get into it, and now we're going to create our task queue. So we're going to add a model and a task model. So the way that this will work is you have your task model, and we have two sort of threads. We have our main Python running the server, and then we have the background worker Python. And the main Python running the server will then add, will save tasks to the queue. So save, save a, a task instance to the database. And then the Python worker in a separate instance will always be checking the database and seeing, are there any more tasks? Are there any more tasks? Yes, there is a new task. And then we'll go into the task and then go to the function and run it and then get a result, which our other instance, our web app can then access. So that's a very simple overview. Okay, so let's let's create that. Let's go into our models.py, models.py in sim, copy this in, and you can see, and then we have our sample model as well. So paste it in. Yeah, so that's that's to where this is our finding the location of the of the module. You see my apps of task, then the function, and then all these things I've been explaining. Run the task, so that's running by the whole worker, executing the task, and I think that should be. Yeah, no need to get. We'll come back to this later. Okay, let's run our migrations. New terminal, and then copy this in. Okay, good. And now we want to create that worker we mentioned. So the separate Python, we've got our Python web app in Django, but then we've got our separate Python worker that's going to actually go into the database, check what tasks, take them out, run them, and then save the result back to the database. So create a file at tar a sim and then tasks. Tasks dot, dot py. And then copy this in. Tiny quick explanation for this. Pretty much as I've said, I think hopefully this is uh, clear enough to you. I'll try to make the code clean. One point here that's useful to note is the transaction atomic that you might not have come across that before. That's really useful because it means that if you try saving to the database, actually it's a bit unnecessary here, but it essentially means if, if you try saving to the database, any other database operations you have and it fails, any other database operations you're doing in that same transaction won't happen. Little, little unnecessary here, but it's there. And this, this skip locked is significant because that prevents, uh, that kind of isolates the different instances. And if one is locked, so it's being accessed by the Django ORM in the database by one worker, because we could have multiple workers, then the worker won't go into it and won't update it. Okay. 
And this is the worker loop, background worker that continually fetches and processes. Okay, moving on, section four. Let's add and view tasks on our Postgres queue with Django. So we're gonna add these sample functions, sample to our to a services.py here. Services.py, add them in, and then we can queue them as tasks. So this queuing is what your web app will be calling to put them in the queue and then the and then the worker processes them. Into our terminal, uh, we'll create a new Python shell, Python manage.py shell we can paste that in ah, i've worked this time that's because it's python and then we create this is how we add a task so it's up oh, boom there, there it is great <laughs> that was very quick so you see we've added the task now but it hasn't been started because we're not running our worker yet which we will shortly we'll add another task here oh another model not ah very good so i think i made an error here create another model, not add another model. <laughs> okay, I'll update this syntax here. It should be, I changed the content since. Great, there we go, we've added it. Okay, let's run the worker. And we can just, uh, let, let's let's quit this. Kind of unnecessary, but let's do it. Okay, and now we're going to import the worker. So remember, we've got these tasks queued up in our database now. So worker and then worker dot run. Great, there you go, it started and then completed. So this happened very quickly because our tasks are very, are very short. We're just creating a database op and then also timesing a number. So and but now you see there are no tasks in the queue, so then it's sleeping because we don't need to run continually. You could increase the sleep to yeah, a longer period if you know you, you only need to process background operations, background processes once every minute, let's say. So when we deploy this to production, this would run forever, just in a continual loop, and then updating, getting things from the database. Yeah, so let's exit that. And so we can also, how to, I wrote here, how to view all tasks in the queue. You can do that quite simply, just this, because we just, yeah, we can just see all the, it's just a simple database. Uh, we can do that programmatically, so we can be in Python here and just go, and that's all of our tasks. And as you can see, there have been roughly task, task, task four that we've done in this database. I did a few earlier. But as you can see, this is really neat because you can, yeah, it's just really easy to access and I'd say easier than Celery or other heavy things. And as you can see, we've just done this in very few lines so far. We can also do this in the Django in the admin, as you'd expect. It's just all the benefits of having this simple system and it's so easy to see. So we just put this into our admin. And let's go back is our, yep, still running. And so there we can see, uh, there are the tasks. So it's that easy to find your tasks, <laughs> really phenomenally easy. And we go into, create another model. There we are, that's, we created Robert. Uh, those are arguments we gave. There's the name of the sample object. Okay, so let's finish off. So we're pretty much there. It's super simple and nice. Uh, I like it a lot to do it this way. So in terms of how to run the task queue and worker in production, the obvious question. So I've mentioned this a little bit. What you would do is, uh, assuming you're on the cloud, it doesn't really matter though, actually, you would have uh, your your database. I, I use render normally, so you have your database in on a, on a render server. Then you have your worker, your private worker that we've mentioned, and then we've got your web server. And the web server and the private worker interact with the database, but then you can have many more workers, potentially you have as many as you want. And so that adds scalability and you can just go to whichever cloud service you're using, get another worker and then run a, you'd have to add a, a simple script to run the task, to run the worker dot run, to run this when the worker starts up and that's it, you're done. Cool, so if you enjoyed that, check out my mailing list, link in the description below, or check out my product, Foden Designer, app.foden Designer, to build Django incredible uh, UI incredibly quickly. Here are a few ex recent examples and just generating things and then use it in your products to build front end even faster. Besides that, I'm making more Django and Python content weekly, as well as blending in some useful AI tools that I'm using ubiquitously. Here are a few more videos.